If we're not, then we are moving in the direction of Jesus. Because the Father is responsible for all creation. And Jesus said, nobody can come to me except the Father draw him. Now, there is a section in God's plan where he says, you go into one place or the other. And when you come before me at the end, there will be no excuse. Now, remember, Jesus, who is God, and you might not know that yet, but he is. Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the Father draw him. So, at the very end, we're standing in front of the Creator. We just died, and now we're standing in front of the Creator. We have no excuse for not following Jesus. The first question that we'll hear is, well, what did you do with my son? We cannot have the excuse, well, I just never knew him. I never knew about him. Nobody ever told me about him. Not a good excuse. <laughs> and here's why. Because Jesus said, no one can come to me except the Father draw him. Now, a person could say, well, you never drew me to Jesus. That's the time when the big screen TV comes out <laughs> and we look at a part of that person's life where, sure enough, someone said something about Jesus and maybe even gave a presentation, something like this. No excuse. We have no excuse for not being part of Jesus program. No excuse. Now, in a sense, that's not voluntary, is it? We voluntarily want to go to hell or we want to voluntarily go to heaven? Which <laughs> one? I mean, I know which one I would choose. <laughs> I would choose it. But that would be my choice. I would be, it would be me choosing voluntarily. I don't want to go to the hot place. I want to go to the other. <laughs> Bob. So we have some principles here. Voluntary. Must be voluntary. We must commit ourselves. Now what does that mean? Well, it's like a contract. Well, anyone in here knows about contracts? Write on a piece of paper, sign it, and now we've got an agreement here. Contract is the offer, the acceptance, and then we pay something. Something called consideration at law. So, we have a contract with Jesus. Jesus is going to be our Savior, not someone else. He's the only one who died for us. Nobody else died for us. Only Jesus did that. In all of history, no one died except Jesus. Now, we're told in the early part of Genesis, in fact in Genesis 3, that we were promised a Savior the Savior would crush the head of Satan, and Satan would bruise the heel of Jesus. That heel was nailed to the cross. Mm. And when Jesus rose and conquered death, he crushed the head of Satan. 
that's what the promise was way back there in the beginning when we said, oh, well, we want that forbidden fruit. We, we don't want to <laughs> obey you. That's what we said, ultimately. Okay, that's, that's how it all worked out at, at that point. Now, so we've got, we have to, we have to make a decision on our own. It has to be voluntary. Then we contract with Jesus that he's going to be our king. He'll be yeah. the one who is in charge of our lives. And then the next part of it is, and I know that all y'all in here know English pretty well. And here's what I mean by that. Remember back in the elementary school when you're English teacher said something about present perfect tense. Whoa, that's so long ago I can't remember what that meant. <laughs> am I am I am I going too far back or what? Alright, so present perfect tense is always on now. In always the now. Now, here's what, here's the next part of this. It's so, it's so neat. <coughs> <laughs> Remember in the beginning on day six, the creator gathered up some dirt and the dirt had water in it. You know, we got a lot of water in us. Gathered up some dirt and formed the man in his image okay well that's kind of nice that means that we look like him or we are in the image that he had of us a lot of things about that but he also gave us attributes things that we can attribute to the creator aspects of us that are like the Creator. One of those aspects that are dramatically right now is we live in the now. We don't live back here in the past. That's part of a, our experience, yes. We do not live out there in the future because we don't know what's going to happen in the next five seconds, do we? Mm -hmm. Not really. I could keel over and fall over, and, and then, boom, I melted in front of me. Could, won't. Lord says I got 40 more years. <laughs> Said 120, right? <laughs> That's where I'm going. So he says he's like Moses. <laughs> Moses lived 120 years, and we'll get to that part. <laughs> so, an attribute that the Lord has is He's always present always present. He has other attributes. He's omnipotent. That means he has all the power. He is ever present. Omnipresent. And can someone else tell me what the other major attribute is of our creator? No sin. He's perfect. Pure. He is perfect. Another attribute is he is omniscient. He knows everything. Wow. Hmm. We don't Amazing. have those attributes, but we do have one of them, and that is we live in the now. Yes. We live in the present perfect tense. Every step we take, every move we make, it's all in the now. We're 